Welcome to our video on topic modeling which is a powerful technique in natural language processing, used for document tagging, survey analysis, and content organization. As an unsupervised learning method, it's highly cost-effective since it doesn't require manually labeled data. Today we'll explore BERT Topic, a popular Python library for transformer-based topic modeling, and apply it over the use case of processing financial news efficiently and extract trending topics from top Google search results and refine topic keywords to be more representative. If you would like to read the blog post that covers these concepts in more details, please check out the link in the description. Let's start with walking through the six core modules of BERT Topic that work together to create meaningful topics. The first module, Embeddings. BERT Topic relies on sentence transformer models to convert text into numerical representations that capture the meaning of sentences. These models are built on transformer architectures and are specially designed to create high-quality sentence embeddings. Using these embeddings, we can measure how similar sentences are to each other through cosine distance calculations. Now, there are two main models we'll look at today. First is all mini LM L6V2 which is lightweight and delivers fast performance. Second is BGE Base NV1.5, which offers stronger semantic understanding but runs more slowly. You'll find numerous pre-trained sentence transformers available on the Sentence Transformer website and Hugging Face Model Hub. We can use a few lines of code to load a sentence transformer model and encode the text sequences into high-dimensional numerical embeddings. Then feed this sentence transformer to BERT Topic Pipeline and keep all other modules as the default settings. As the result, we get the following topic representations. Compared to the result of the more powerful and larger BGE Base NV1.5 model, which is slightly more meaningful but still leaves large room for improvement. One area for improvement is reducing the dimensionality, because sentence transformers typically results in high dimensional embeddings. As BERT Topic relies on comparing the spatial proximity between embedding space to form meaningful clusters, it is crucial to apply a dimensionality reduction technique to make the embeddings less sparse. There are two main techniques to integrate with BERT Topic for dimensionality reduction while keeping the important patterns in our data, Principal Component Analysis, or PCA, and Uniform Manifold Approximation and Projection, or UMAP. We'll focus on UMAP since it's the default method in BERT Topic. UMAP is a non-linear algorithm that comes from topology analysis and helps us find different patterns in the data. It works by creating connections between data points that are close to each other. An important UMAP parameter is nNeighbors that controls how UMAP balances local versus global structure in the data. Looking at the visualization here, when we use low values of nNeighbors, UMAP will focus more on local structure. As we increase end neighbors towards 100 or 150, the points start forming more cohesive global patterns, identifying broader relationships among data points. The min distance parameter in UMAP determines how closely points can cluster together in the lower dimensional space. Think of it as setting a minimum distance between points. When we use a smaller min distance value, points can pack tightly together. With a larger min distance value, points will spread out more evenly across the space, forming more circular patterns. Based on our hyperparameter tuning experiments, we found that setting n neighbors to 5 and min distance to 0.01 gives us the best results. These settings help create distinct data clusters that are easier for the subsequent clustering model to process. After the dimensionality reduction step, we move on to grouping our embeddings into clusters based on how close they are to each other. This clustering process is essential for topic modeling because it helps us group similar text documents together by analyzing their semantic relationships. By default, BERT Topic uses the HDB scan model, which is great at finding clusters with different densities. You can also choose other clustering methods depending on your data, like k-means for evenly sized, circular clusters, or agglomerative clustering if you want a hierarchical structure. Now let's look at HDB scan's two key parameters and how they affect our clustering results. The first one is min cluster size, which sets how many data points we need to form a cluster. If we set this too low, we might end up with lots of small, unstable clusters that are just noise. But if we set it too high, we might combine clusters that should really be separate. 
The second parameter is min samples, which looks at how far apart points are from their neighbors to determine how strict we should be when forming clusters. When we increase min samples, the clustering becomes more conservative, only forming clusters in areas where points are really close together. To help us choose the right values for these parameters, we use something called a condensed tree. This visualization shows us how stable our clusters are over different parameter values. The best clusters are ones that are both tall on the tree, meaning they're stable, and wide, meaning they have a good number of points. We tested min cluster size values from 3 all the way up to 50, and looked at how the points clustered together in the vector space. From our experiments, we found that setting min cluster size to 15 works best. This gives us four solid clusters that show up clearly in red on the condensed tree plot. When we look at how the points are grouped in our scatter plot, we can see these clusters make sense based on how close the points are to each other. When we compare k-means to hbscan, k-means gives us more control over how detailed our topics can be. We can do this by setting the number of clusters we want through the end cluster parameter, which directly determines how many topics we'll get from our text documents. Let me show you what happens when we adjust the number of clusters in k-means from 3 all the way up to 50. Starting with n cluster set to 3, we see the data split into three main groups. As we increase this number to 5, 8, 10, and more, we get increasingly detailed groupings. The k-means clusters tend to form more circular shapes compared to what we saw with HDB scan. Now that we've covered the modules that group documents into similar clusters, we will focus on fine-tuning our topics by selecting more meaningful keywords. BERT topic provides several vectorization options. Let's explore count vectorizer and its key parameters we can adjust to improve our topic representations. The ngram range parameter lets us combine multiple words into topic phrases. The stop words parameter helps us remove common words that don't add meaning, which greatly enhances our topic clarity. Finally, we have min-df and max-df, which control how frequently a term needs to appear to be included in our vocabulary. Min-df sets the minimum number of documents where a term must appear, while max-df sets an upper limit to exclude when a term frequently appears in too many documents. Here we demonstrate the result of k-means with count vectorizer and max-df setting to 0.8, showing noticeable improvements after introducing the count vectorizer significantly reducing keywords frequently appeared in all documents and not bringing extra values, such as stock and apple. While the vectorizer module focuses on adjusting topic representation at the document level, CTFIDF works at the cluster level to reduce frequently encountered topics. The way it works is by treating all documents in one cluster as a single document, then calculating keyword importance using the traditional TFIDF approach. Let's look at two important settings in CTFIDF. First, there's reduce frequent words, which tells the model whether to give less weight to words that show up often across different topics. Second, we have BM25 weighting which handles documents of different lengths better and works well with stop words and smaller datasets. After applying CTFIDF, the results show that adding CTFIDF has no major impact to the end results when count vectorizer has already been added. This is potentially because our count vectorizer has already set a high bar of eliminating words appearing in more than 80% at the document level. Subsequently, this already reduces overlapping vocabularies at the topic cluster level, which is what CTFIDF is intended to achieve. Now we will move on to the last module, the representation model. This component plays a crucial role in fine-tuning how our topics are represented. Unlike the frequency-based approaches we discussed earlier with vectorizer and CTFIDF, this module takes a different approach. It looks at the semantic similarity between keyword candidates and documents to identify the most representative topic keywords. This results in topics that are more semantically meaningful and helps reduce redundant similar keywords. BERT topic gives us several powerful options for representation models. First, there's KeyBERT Inspired, which uses semantic similarity to extract the most relevant topic words. Then we have zero-shot classification, which utilizes pre-trained models from the Hugging Face Model Hub to label our topics. And finally, there's Maximal Marginal Relevance, which helps eliminate synonyms like stock and stocks from our topics. 
We found that KeyBRT Inspired is a very cost-effective approach as it significantly improves the end result by adding a few extra lines of code, without the need of extensive hyperparameter tuning. After incorporating the KeyBert Inspired representation model, we now observe that models generate noticeably more coherent and valuable themes. This tutorial provides a walkthrough of BERT Topic 6 core modules for transforming financial news into meaningful topics, demonstrating how each component from embeddings to representation models. If you find it helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos like this.